Okay, uh, in the concluding lecture of, of week one, uh, I just introduced you to the general formulation of systems. So, I, as I said, we will deal with finite dimensional systems or systems which are represented by ordinary differential equations. We will not deal uh, with uh, general formulation of infinite dimensional systems or hybrid systems. So, we will restrict ourselves to finite dimensional systems. So, we will be talking both with uh, interested both in uh, continuous and uh, discrete time linear finite dimensional systems. And these systems usually arise from linearization of nonlinear system. So, we will uh, sometime later in the course talk about methods of linearization and also limitations of uh, linearization. We will talk about some different methods also of linearization, right. So, in general, so all systems are de described by a set of nonlinear equations, right. So, you will have uh, uh, if I just were to write it in more general terms, you will have uh, n state variables uh, related via a nonlinear relation f between the states and the inputs. I will also be interested in measuring the outputs for obvious reasons, which are also some nonlinear functions of x and u. So, usually my notations will be I will have a system of n states, uh, m inputs and p outputs together with some uh, initial conditions which may be required for me to at some some stage compute the solutions or we will we will see how, how that goes a little later in, in the course. So, I can just write this down in, in a compact form as uh, x dot equal to f x comma u where f takes values from r n cross r m to give me again some values in Rn. So, this will be a general notation that we will follow, right. So, Rn would be an n dimensional vector space. We will learn those properties of vector space in, in the next lecture. Rm will be an n dimensional vector space where my set of inputs come from. Rn is where my set of states come from. In the example, for example, in, in the case of uh, the inverted pendulum, my states were uh, two dimensional input was just R 1, it is just a little perturbation or a torque that was applied. Okay. Similarly, with, with the outputs, right. So, outputs again they is like a map from R n cross R m, the, the state space, the input space to the output space. You could have p outputs or you know, we have not so far explicitly defined outputs, but for example, in the case of the pendulum, I can I could measure for example, the velocity as the output, the angular velocity or even the position may be for example, as the as the output. Okay. So, okay. so let us do a little little example of, of, of this one, right. So, um, let us say that I take a, a simplified model of a car which is also called a, a unicycle again from, from, the, from this uh, famous book on, on nonlinear control systems. Uh, so, uh, in this control, I have two control signals. One is like the rotation, I will call this u 2, right. And then one is just the translational motion, right. So, just u 1 here. So, I can just go, uh, so, so what I am allowed is movements which are like this and also movements which are like this. And that will define, so it will cover all the all the state, state space of, 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 of my car, right. It can go anywhere in, in, the, in the R 2 plane, okay. So, the speed of the rolling, right, this is, is controlled by u 1 and the rotation is controlled by u2, then I can write down the equations in the following way, right. So, the, 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 the change in x1 direction, x1 dot, the change in x2 is x2 dot and then x3 dot. This is a simple relation which we can derive, right. Cos of x3, sin of x3, uh, uh, 0 here and then x3, x3 dot is simply the uh, directly proportional to, to, to u2, right. So, this is an example which uh, which looks like this, right, of a general form of a nonlinear system, x dot equal to f x uh, comma u. Uh, special class of systems are, are which are affine in inputs, as we saw in the case of uh, the nonlinear pendulum, right. So again, I don't, I will not derive that. Again, uh, so here uh, instead of f being from R n cross R m to R n, f is just a simple, simply a map from R n to R n. Similarly, g is also from uh, uh, R n to R n, right. Similarly, with the maps h and k, you can, you can, as an exercise, you can just write down what the, what, what the, uh, the domain and the range of, of these maps are. 
Okay, so once we perform the process of linearization, I would be interested essentially in two kinds of systems, right? One is continuous time systems. Uh, I use the word here invariant. I will elaborate on this shortly. Uh, continuous time systems x dot t is a x t plus b u t y is c x plus d u. So, uh, in most cases when it is obvious, I will just write x t as just x. So similarly, when it is obvious, I will just, uh, uh, I will just uh, kind of omit this, this argument just to, to make the notations a bit, uh, bit compact. So, well, you, you can see that A is a n cross n matrix where the system is uh, x, x is in R n, say u is in R m. So, B will be an n cross n matrix. Uh, C will be, okay, if I have P inputs, uh, then C will be a matrix which is uh, P cross X dimension and similarly with, uh, with D. That's, and this will be same even if I am looking at, uh, uh, at, at, at a discrete uh, time system. So, what is the time invariance uh, in this, in this, in these cases? So, by time invariant, we essentially mean that the system parameters A, B, C and D are they do not really change uh, with time, and so they are they are just constant. Uh, for example, uh, say a mass or, uh, or a resistance or an inductance, you say that they are just constant over time. So I don't really have to worry about any change in in, in, in the system parameters. Uh, time varying systems where I know well maybe that say maybe my fitness level will change with respect to my age. So, I can say well that that is can be modeled as a time varying system where the parameters essentially are the ones which are uh, which are varying with time a, b, c and d are now also some functions of time. Still these are still linear systems, right? there is nothing that, that is uh, adding to the complexity yet. I am still looking at linear systems, but where the parameters are changing with time. For example, if I can write as f equal to m x double dot is a linear system, f equal to m t x double dot is also a, a linear system just that it is it is time varying. Maybe the mass changes with time. For example, if I look at an automobile, uh, the mass would change it with time because of the fuel uh, which is being consumed. Uh, now, this time varying can, in, can be generalized to something called a linear uh, parameter varying systems. We will not really uh, explicitly deal with these systems. Uh, we will deal a, a bit with, with, with time varying systems, but it is interesting to know what are these parameter varying systems. So, if you buy any, any equipment, right, say, you will say, well, its uh, operating region is between, say, 10 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. What happens outside the range? Uh, well, it is not guaranteed to perform because some parameters might change. For example, I know that uh, that uh, resistance can vary with uh, temperature or some other uh, you know, parameters of the system can vary, can also depend on, uh, on, on pressure or humidity uh, and things like that. So, whenever uh, the specifications of the equipment are to, to, uh, to work within a certain atmospheric conditions could be temperature or pressure, it essentially means that uh, outside those range the parameters might change and therefore, my performance of the system will, will also change. Uh, a, a little simple example would be, uh, so uh, in most operating regions V would be a linear relation with R and R would be fairly constant. But if I say R is different depending on temperature, you know, then that is uh, a parameter varying resistant. It is actually depending on the temperature. Uh, uh, let us revisit the, the, the predator prey model, right, of what parameter varying could actually mean in some of those cases. Uh, so, where we had that, okay, the, that A, uh, B, C and D governed how the system actually behaved. So, A was the rate at which my small fish was, was increasing uh, so, or, or multiplying. Uh, some obvious observation would tell us that uh, one way of, of modeling this could be or one way of influencing the rate of, of growth of the small fish could, could directly depend on the amount of uh, you know, food that is available, right. So, the rate of, of which S grows is a function of uh, food supply. So, this I can just uh, add an extra term or extra maybe flexibility to model this as a, a, a parameter varying system. And you could visualize many of this, I can maybe uh, 
sometime during the, the course quote you some, some, some literature on, on parameter varying systems, even though that will not really be uh, our, uh, our aim to comprehensively uh, look at those. Uh, so this ends uh, uh, module 1, uh, so from module 2 uh, we will start learning some basic tools uh, from linear algebra starting from vector spaces till some uh, matrix algebra which will form a bulk of tools that we will use in this courses uh, through, through the rest of the course. So as, as I suggested it would be nice for you to look at some comprehensive lectures on linear algebra. Even though we will teach you what all we need in, uh, through the course, we will give you a set of problems to work out apart from, from the regular assignments. Um, and I really uh, hope that you spend a lot of time doing uh, the module 2 and 3 in detail uh, so as to have a smooth transition through the rest uh, of the course. Uh, so see you in, in module 2. Thank you.